myself I'd be in or she go where the mountains stand away and is there This particular song couldn't be anything else but American. Unfortunately, it's almost impossible to avoid picking up some of the, the native culture, to use the word advisedly. There's, uh, I think, something, something singularly barbaric about the whole context of this song. You can approach it either as being a subject macabre or one completely ludicrous. It's one of the big business fields in the States, uh, the funeral homes. <laughs> and at the moment, since they've pretty well exhausted the, uh, those who have already departed this earth, they are concentrating about 75% of the time on what they call pre-need arrangements. In other words, they're flogging uh, cemetery space to people who are still in a fit state to pay through the nose for it. <laughs> and as part of this, this whole thing, one could loosely call it culture, I suppose, there is uh, a commercial a singing commercial, of course. Spoken commercials are almost non-existent in America these days. And uh, any of you to whom the book uh, The American Way of Death is familiar may have come across this singing commercial before. <coughs> Chambers, caskets are just fine Made of sandalwood and pine If you love to go. Call, call on the 690. <laughs> if your loved ones pass away, have them pass the chamber's way. <laughs> 
do rather than because I couldn't avoid it and uh, we just heard one about time and rule. This I would suspect is a song which was probably originally, it's uh, American by adoption, sounds very much on an English theme to my uneducated ears. It's a song for which I'm indebted to a, a couple from Montana called Bob and Evelyn Beers. Um, Bob is one of the few, as far as I know, living exponents of the medieval psaltery. A uh, marvellous instrument, very much like the hammer dulcimer, on which he plays everything from Chopin to barroom ballads equally well. And uh, this is one of the beer songs. Marvellous name. <coughs> In my garden grew plenty of time. It would flourish by night and by day. All came aloud and he took all I had. He stole my sweet time away. He stole my sweet time away. And I was a damsel fair, but fair I was. To have been. So I washed me in milk and I clad me in silk, and I put the sweet time in my hair, and I put the sweet time in my hair. In June, the red roses in bloom, but that is no flower for me. I pulled me a board and it pricked me to blood and I gazed on the willow tree and I gazed on the willow tree for the willow tree it will twist and the willow tree it will twine I would I were clasped in my lover's arms fast, for tis he who has stolen my time, for tis he who has stolen my time. In my garden grew plenty of time, it would flourish by night and by day. thing but one of the earliest influences that I can recall was also American. Unfortunately this is one that I haven't been able to forget. There was a young man very much to the fore many years ago who for quite some considerable time I regarded as the greatest thing since sliced bread. I haven't adopted his style but as I say neither have I forgotten his material. <coughs> There's no joy in my heart, only sorrow. I'm as sad as a man can be. I sit alone in the darkness of this lonely room. And this room is a prison to me. I look out the window 
since I hear tentative, if very musical, attempts at uh, choruses in the background. I don't mind how much noise you make, as long as it's in tune and uh, roughly in the same tempo as the way I'm singing it. This is a Southern Appalachian. I don't propose, incidentally, to sing American material all night. I'm just getting out of the way first. It's difficult to ignore the last few years. And uh, I also have got a bit of a, a complex because with a name like mine, which is fairly, because a good horse thief name from the borders, in the States it's quite uncommon, and uh, people sight unseen immediately assume that I'm American Indian. And this is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this has led to a good deal of confusion. Uh, um, and one laddie at some university other went so, so far as to actually give me a blurb, you know, in the introductory uh, pamphlet to the concert as, as being a full-blooded American Indian, and I had 45 minutes to talk myself out of that one. <laughs> the uh, <clears throat> audience took 15 minutes to get the, the facts into their head that I was, in fact, speaking a variety of English. <laughs> the, uh, this is not too difficult to understand because you're all very familiar with the uh, Scottish attempts at as again was already mentioned, Scottish attempts at foreign accents, be they English or American, and particularly foreign attempts at Scottish accents, all of which hinge particularly on two sounds, which uh, are what you might almost call uh, built-in speech, speech defects for most people born north of the border. The, uh, the palatal... <laughs> <laughs> you want to move? <laughs> and uh, the glottal stop, or more correctly, the glottal stop. <laughs> As in, hey, what a bottle. <laughs> what I always loved, my name's Patterson, spelled with two T's. <laughs> <laughs> or the one that's liable to give you a. Uh, very hard time. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she says this butter's better. If I put it in my butter, it'll make my butter better. If I put it in my butter, it'll make my butter better. So Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter and it made the butter better. <laughs> this whole approach to, uh, to the language, it's not unknown on the other side of the Atlantic. In fact, there are a few unfortunate, several million of them, in one particular town which uh, who can make a very adequate attempt at it. Uh, I'm talking about New York City, where because of the climate, I suspect, everybody is bored with a permanent post-nasal drip. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I can uh, safely say that the two ugliest human utterances I have ever heard came, one from New York City, <coughs> where an extremely well-dressed young lady came out of a nightclub and turned and yelled to her friend, Let's grab a cab. <laughs> and the other one was in Leaven about a month ago. <laughs> when also a very well turned out young lady, perhaps not dressed in quite the same manner, turned and yelled at her friend, See you, you're going to get your face to it. <laughs> Which also tended to shatter the image somewhat. <laughs> I have no idea what I started to introduce in the song about the two minutes ago. Um, language, language, language. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Somebody was listening. That's very good. This is a, a song which depends an awful lot more on you than it does on me. It's a tradition known as lining out, <coughs> lining out hymns from uh, the Southern Appalach Appalachians from Kentucky. And this is probably one of the best known of the lot. It's called Amazing Grace. And I'll give you the first chorus singing both parts. Uh, what in effect happens is that a, is a, a liner, a liner out, or a line outer, no, it's a cantor anyway, uh, gives you the, the words beforehand that's sort of monotone, and you have to know the melody to which to sing them. So it goes this way Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 
It was, you see, to tell a wee bit story at the Kirk Swarry. Now my chance came at last, but Lord preserve us, I couldn't say a word for I felt that nervous. I thought upon a limerick and I thought upon a riddle. I started on a story, but I stopped it in the middle. For the story I had started, it was not, you see, the kind you can tell at a Kirk Swarry. <laughs> After that evening, men would stop for the finish of my story in my side street shop. My business grew so rapidly and so did my renown that soon I was elected for the council of the town. <laughs> And they made me the convener of the sewerage committee for the story I had started in the case. <laughs> when I became a magistrate, promotion proved my ruin. For the first time that I sat upon the bench was my undoing. 
Waarop je actionable conduct uit de trouwe vrienden mijn. En die hem zeven days wat ik de option of fijn. Vertel een keer aan Bobby, een staunch we free. The story I had started in the girl's So I retired from public life, a disappointed man. With my mouth all twisted, telling stories in my head, man. Now many years have passed since fortune gave me such a knock. But just the other evening I received an office shock. For the minister's flapper daughter at her feathers jubilee told. The story I had started <laughs> at the castle. <laughs> sing was this one which I would say fairly obviously was originally Scottish. I haven't or hadn't until fairly recently heard it sung in this country at all. <coughs> Dumbarton's drum
Then a big brown paper bag I spied So I popped out the old cat inside And old fire went to with the body in the bag The body in the bag time. I went into a pub to have a whiskey neat And she gently laid me burning underneath the seat Scarcely had I gotten but a short way down the town When I heard a voice behind me, here's your parcel, Mr. Brown So I had to stop and give the bloody fool half a crown For bringing me the body in the bag So old fire went to with the body in the bag The body in the bag I'm sure if you put your mind stuff, you could be a lot more miserable than that <laughs> I threw it in the river, but the hero of some play jumped right in to save it, crying, hip, 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 hooray. Says he to me, I don't do this as a rule. Now I find I'm rather wet and also rather cool. So I had to take me trousers off and give them to the fool for saving me the body in the bag. So, oh, fire went with the body in the bag. Body in the back. I crept up some stairs, quiet as any mouse. Gently laid me burn on the doorstep of my house. Just then the door flew open, and a lady dressed in blue said, Pardonnez-moi, monsieur, but do you parlez vous I said, could heavens no lady have got better things to do and skedaddled with me body in the bag. So, fire went with the body in the bag, the body in the bag. I heard it fall on, my feet began to drag. I thought I felt a movement from inside the bag. I looked inside and I heard a plaintive meow. You needn't bother, Tabby said it's all right now. <coughs> and there were seven little bodies in the bag. <laughs> so oh, I went to with the bodies in the bag, the bodies in the bag. Ta -da.